Hi Spade Freaks and sports fans, Wait, welcome to another episode of the channel. Not too much to report on the one tonner today, um, had it up in the air yesterday, gone through the gears because the shifter's all hooked up, trying to find gears, trying to create some uh, pressure in the transmission and uh, I got enough oil to get reversed but no forward gears so it's almost the end of the weekend so I'll have to save that for next weekend when I get some more trans fluid. Um, on a positive note, if I pump the brakes enough, it will kill the engine, so that's pretty neat. Today we're going to talk about something that I see posted at least once a fortnight, if not weekly, on Facebook. We're going to be talking about trays, wheels, offsets or backspacing, depending on how old you are, and how big of a tyre you can fit underneath a tray. We'll start off things first because we've got the wheel right here. The biggest wheel you can fit under the car. Um, this is a 20 by 10 with a 305 tyre. We've got five inch backspace, so it's zero offset. So it's a pretty big wheel. Um, I may be changing the wheels down the track to an eight and a half inch wheel with standard backspacing or five inch backspacing. Um, if you're from Adelaide, you'll know exactly what type of wheels I'm gonna be putting on this car because it's Adelaide's favorite wheel. All right, so it's a pretty big wheel you can fit under it. Um, it all, all depends on your backspacing. The wheel is one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to have to buy before building a tray because you can only get so far with building the tray um, until you're guessing clearances and heights of things. Um, fairly early in, I bought the wheels for this. I knew exactly what wheels I wanted. Um, I just went bigger off the fronts to the backs. Um, I also lowered it so that I knew the exact clearances because I didn't want to be guessing anywhere. So I've lowered this. These are Ute's um, leaf springs from the style side. They're a lot softer spring, um, so a lot, a lot more forgiving, but these are virtually parallel and I've lowered these. I think the guy said they're about, he reset them to about three and a half to four inches. So they're virtually parallel. Um, you can't really get more lower than that until they start become well, they're going to become inverted um, so first up you want to sort your wheels out um, you want to buy tires I, I suggest just buying cheap tires because we don't know how long the tires are going to sit around for on the car and more than likely once this car's done it's going to be skidded before it hits the road so you don't want to skid you know $200 each tires these ones are fairly cheap. Um, I think they're like 140 bucks each. So, all right, we'll jump into the tray and I'll start running you through some of the things that you need to think about when building a tray. All right, so in between this video, I'm gonna be throwing up a few pictures of this tray when it was being built. Um, first things first is uh, you wanna get your initial skeleton done. Start from the back of the cab. With this tray, I went the width of the cab keep it pretty streamlined. Um, I lined it up with the original bolt holes and then after I had that sitting all true I then came to this one off the original part of the chassis. This hung over about you know, an inch. I knew I was going to be putting this in um, so the tray overall length isn't much bigger. It's probably shorter than a, an original one. I haven't measured them against each other. Um, as for width um, as you can see in the initial skeleton. Um, I went uh, along with the chassis rails. Um, they were all lined up. After, and then I did some cross bracing in between. I made them pretty nice and tight because I'm only using 1.2 millimeter steel instead of the uh, 1.6. With my um, tight bracing, I didn't really need to uh, have a thicker gauge steel. So you can do that part of the tray, no worries, without your wheels or setting up your suspension. I actually did that part on my wood yurt, which I'll be building in the future. But after that, if you want to go any further and build what I call the sides, so from here to here, along, 
I call the sides. Um, you will need to set up your suspension and have your wheels that you want to be running. So, get your wheels, get your suspension, then you can work out your clearances properly and not just guesstimate because assumptions don't work out as we all know and uh, you don't want to build a whole tray and have it all nicely painted up and whatnot and, you know, have it scrub like fuck because who wants that? Um, so, the tubs I'm using, you can see, move in. The tubs I'm using are the Mr. Mudguard 12 inch tub. I've got enough clearance either way. Um, as you can see, this is virtually in line with the, uh, with the back of the cab. The widest part of my tray is the tub, so you can add so the overall width of my tray is chassis rail to chassis rail plus 12 inches either side. It, 12 inches is where it comes off. Um, it doesn't stick out excessively at the ends. Um, it looks quite nice if you ask me, but maybe I'm saying that because I build it. So my tray is the coffin style type of tray. And now when I went about building this, um, I already had the wheel arch on. And as you can see from the photos, there was a lot of guesswork in getting the angle right. I did this, this was the first side I did, and I just had to get me straight bar and, you know, get the angle right. So building this, obviously it would be a lot easier and simpler if it was square and I'd have a wider tray slightly. But I wanted to do something different and I went with the coffin style. So I went off, obviously I went off my widest point here and my widest point here. And I looked, had it with a straight edge and I had it with RHS. And I had to kind of mock it all up how I wanted it to. And then I tacked it all together and then I had to then I made a template out of cardboard for here and I flipped that over for the other side um, so I could mirror the other side as close as I could to this side. I do have some cross bracing in here and here just to give it a bit more strength as you'll see in the photos. So once the overall skeleton of the tray was made on both sides, I then went ahead and stripped the top of the coating off of the um, RHS before I put the sheeting on there. I sandblasted it, wire wheeled, whatever I could get in there with, and then I coated it with U-Paul's um, weld through primer. So I didn't sandwich rust between the sheet and the uh, RHS. The sheeting that I've got on this is 1.2. I went for that over the 1.6 because there's a lot of cross bracing in this tray and, and as you can see it doesn't really flex so that was perfect and it kept the weight down a little bit now don't get me wrong this tray requires three people to lift so it's not light at all um, it takes three people to lift because that's all the people that live here and uh, that can lift it so um, I guess that's lucky for me so she was just 1.2. So the fundamentals of the tray, you can do your initial frame first, um, but when you want to go from the tire outwards, you're really going to have your wheels and uh, how low or how high you want the car, depending on how low or high you want the tray. If it's gonna hug the wheels like these ones, you obviously wanna have, uh, have it at the height 
and the size wheels that you want because you want to make sure those clearances are spot on because yeah like I said you don't want to build a tray for nothing um, or build a tray just to cut up to because it doesn't fit your wheels so wheels early on build your tray around your wheels pretty much in a nutshell build your tray around your wheels after that RHS depends on what flavor you want to use I use 75 by 50 on this. It is extremely heavy. This tray takes three people to lift. Um, don't believe what people say on Facebook that you can build a whole tray for $200 because I think I'm probably over $1,000 into this. Um, not including the wheels or the reset leaves. That's just the sheet metal and the RHS. And you know, sand for blasting and primer and the wheel tubs, the wheel tubs alone were 300 bucks. Well, I think they were 360, so that, that pretty much says that you can't build a tray for a couple hundred bucks. I mean, you could buy a Git alloy Gibson off Facebook for like 200 bucks, but it kind of defeats the purpose of building a custom tray. But I think that's, that's pretty much building a tray in a nutshell. I mean, I think it goes without saying, measure four times, cut once, um, make sure everything's true, make sure you've got good, um, straight edges and leveling tools because you know once it's done it's done but that's about it in a nutshell I mean make sure you've got good leveling tools make sure you've got square rules measure everything multiple times don't just measure it once and then yep weld it together um, a lot of work went into this tray to make it all square and true I mean this one was a bit more difficult because it's the coffin shaped ones and we wanted it to all don't look the same. Um, I guess one of the easiest things, or well, one of the things that made it easier for this tray is that I made cardboard templates of these panels and I flipped it over onto the other side then I can kind of, you know, that's halfway there for things and I could measure off this one. Um, with this tray I did one side at a time. Uh, with, you know, chassis rails plus 12 inches I kept it the same length front and back from the wheels to uh, what the chassis is it only just overhangs the chassis on this side on the back side but that's that's pretty much it for a tray for tray building um, obviously if you go if you wanted to put a piece along here obviously you wouldn't be able to run a 12 inch tub unless you have a shortened diff. This car doesn't have a shortened diff. Um, it's all standard diff wise. Um, so if you wanted to run, you know, your RHS on the outside of the, of the tub, you would have to bring the wheels in because uh, I don't think you can make it much more wider than this at the rear without it looking like a Coke bottle. But this is this has got a bit of the uh, the old Shakira hips to it, so I'm happy with that. Hips don't lie. So yeah, that's pretty much it for a tray. Next job for this is that we will grind down all the welds. As you can see, it's all same weld all around, plug welded throughout. Um, then it will go off and get sandblasted. After it gets sandblasted and epoxied, it will come back here, and then we'll go go further on with the bodywork and paint. Not 100% sure on what I want to do with the paint, but um, I've got a few ideas in my head, a few different things, um, but when we get there, we'll get there. Anyway, I hope this was informative for anyone who's out there building a tray or wanted tray design. And with that, take it easy.